сыграл на этот фугарман.
He's having service at the bottom, t- at the bottom temple. And Yolisha and I walked in and we joined the service. We didn't even know where we went. So you would be, you'd be driven to that point at some point. So do not be afraid to go and visit other temples. You must go and visit other temples. But you'll know home. Home is home. You know, East West, home is best. You know that. So we can always go all over and we must continue to uh, get the information and understand. <coughs> propagate. The important that we propagate. We're not allowed to go and recruit. We're not allowed to go and change people's religion. That's not our scripture. Our scriptures don't teach us that because we humble. We're not allowed to go and convert people. That we don't do that. But we must go and propagate. Even if it's other beliefs, you must be able to propagate. Let them ask you questions. Jot it down. If you can't answer it, come back. We'll answer it for you. We'll answer. We don't have the answers. We'll find the answers for you. Even if you have to go to Sadhguru and get the answer, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll get the answers for you. We need to get the answers. We'll have to do that. So it's important that you don't need to follow Sadhguru. An amazing individual. That I can't, I never heard so thus far that he doesn't give you a logical answer to any question. Any question. He can be sitting in any forum with any kinds of people, different religions, different races, and he has the appropriate answer for every question. <coughs> so, and you know what, other day I'm listening to him, I'm sitting and I'm listening to him, and he says, this is not, he never studied to do this. But if you have the right intentions and the right belief automatically, these things will come to you. The right answers will come to you. You will get the help of the divine and you will answer these questions. So that's how important it is for us to connect. And we must connect for the right reasons. We must connect for the right reasons. We must come to the temple for the right reasons. We must not come and do Svap Peruman a favor. We're coming to sing for you. We come, yes, we come to glorify. We come to glorify all the Samis and the different renditions that we do for the different Samis that we will do. But at the same time, we want this energies to fill in. We want the same energies, all the words that we're singing to Sami, we want all the energies to come back. As it goes, they must go and bounce back. He must, he must absorb and bounce back and send us all these positive vibrations. That's what we want. We want positive energy to carry us forward. So that, make an be a blessed week. We want to apologize. We we'll have to leave. We're going to a funeral in Tizana. It's quite a, a plane, quite a distance to travel, so a few of us will be excusing ourselves. Bless Sunday, and for those of you that will come tomorrow, we'll see you tomorrow, otherwise we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to get you. Sorry? You. Okay. You're late. Yeah, you're late. Awesome. When Reggie got up, everybody getting up. You know, uh, humble language is so sweet, and if you speak it and if you know the meaning, Ma, you will enjoy it. Simple, humble words to use. And I told you last week, yeah, week that when you are the telephone, you say Vanako. Don't say yellow. That's not in our culture. Vanako, the other side of the exactly who you are. Right? And if you meet somebody on the road when you start a conversation, you say Vanako and you start off the conversation. When you finish your conversation, you are going, don't say bye bye. Marko is something else. Just like it is. Bye bye means gone. You're not going to meet again. Bye bye means you're gone. Not going to me. That is what bye bye means. See, Tamar. Now, koi to bara. Or, little barba. Bye bye means you want. You see how sweet the Tamar words are. You yeah, understand what I'm trying to say? When our people came from India, it's about 164, 163 years ago. They came with not English education, they came with Tamar education, proper. And they came with their culture. Here is a Nada on the cave. That's what carried them. Today, how many of our Tamil speaking people are interested in here is a Nada? There are people out here asking us to come to the practice, learn to sing, play music, come to the ice event. That's where all my children started. And today they play music. Brandon is not working, but that's his passion plus he works. He earned some money. Our culture is the one that brought us home. When the people from India they came, they didn't settle in reservoir hills, on flower rocks, Westville. They settled in barracks, Manchukum barracks, Sizara barracks, uh, Yulova barracks, magazine barracks, railway barracks, all barracks. Where do you come from? I'm back of reservoir hills. I'm back of Westville. Hey, I never said in Manchukum barracks, but they had offspring of Manchukum. From the barracks, 
everybody but the Lord. Why? Because they settled in the barracks with their Tamil culture. They practiced. And this is the ideal month for me to steep on the unique temple that was built by our forefathers in Montecom. The mother and their power stood by her people. Yes, the white superiors in Montecom, they tried to demolish the temple. They tried various things, but the mother stood. Mother stood, and I can guarantee you, and I witnessed some miracles taking place in the temple. Adi Parashakti was there for our people. That today, I'm going to deviate from the spiritual support, speaking about God. I'm going to speak about, we come here to the temple, we pray to God and ask for his support. What about family support? How many of us have families that don't get at there? They've forgotten. They've forgotten some of their families. If you're walking on the road and if you find your nephew or nieces with the mother or father. The father or mother will talk to her, but the nephew and nieces does not know you. Yeah, Am I right? Yeah. He knows this. My brother. Hello. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Cell phone. Yeah. What, happened? what happened to the family value, Ma? Rewind your clock back to 50 years. I'm 73. 50 years, how we live in how many years now? People come and go. Brothers and sisters will come and go. All our parents are ready. And the parents gone? Or not? Because you use the word bye bye. You see? We need to preserve our family ties. Right? Cars, jobs, friends will come and go. But our family remains family. I got this. Few cuttings here. Yeah? This was circulated amongst all the staff at work. We had good friends. And they sent this to me, and I had it filed. <coughs> if you give me five minutes, I will read it. It is quite interesting, right? An elder in my family passed away this week, and my parents immediately made a trip to Durban for the funeral. Not only to mourn her death, but to be there for the rest of the family. A cousin of mine pointed out that these days we generally only see each other at funerals. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We laughed, you laugh, at the irony. But it got me thinking, what is happening to our relationship with our extended families? I can only really speak for the Indian community here. But we are really losing touch with <coughs> one of our major things that made us a community. I remember as a kid, my grandparents' home was always full of people. Their children, siblings, grandchildren, second cousins, their spouses, their nephews, our sisters, uncles came along for every single event. There was always noise, conversation, food and high spirits. There was a sense of kinship and loyalty, even if there was no blood relation. You don't have to be related by blood, no. You can be related by love. Anbu kaar kaam chaka, anbu varo. Munch kaam chaka, oh, anbu varo. There were huge pots of biryani, all sorts of cool drinks, red coke, green coke, and many hands making light work. We didn't need caterers. We didn't have to make a single arrangement for anything. Everyone knew someone who knew someone who could do it in a jiffy, and they did. Weddings were always chaotic, but always a success, because there was always someone to make a plan. The lady in the green sari, whose name I could never remember, had an endless supply of pins to hold up my loose fitting sari blouse. That cousin with the Volvo with the big boot, yes, he is the one who can take all the gifts back to the groom's house after the wedding. Funerals were never an issue. My uncles, cousins, husbands in particular would have everything sorted and the neighbors brought over food and drinks so that the family would not have to worry about those tribal things. There was always a cup of tea ready as soon as you wanted or needed one. There was always someone to share the load. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the event, every single function was filled with love and support from the community. There was never a moment where we were left wanting or needing. 
I did the back to back stack. Yeah. When somebody passes off in their bags, yeah. everybody comes to comfort the family. Pots of food is brought. They say you mustn't like fire, mustn't cook. The people, the community, they come to help. Let the ceremony come. Today's ceremony is what? Like wedding taking place. Round tables. Mm. Hatred. Mm. Thursday ceremony. Prema, you will know. Yeah. Tumble of tea and jam bread. Yes, just so nice. Am I right? Nice it was, yeah. It was all there provided by the entire family. Everyone was auntie and uncle. Yeah. You were always discovering people you never knew. You were related and everyone was family. Now with relatives scattered across the globe, it is understandable that this way of living is unreliable. The demand of our everyday lives makes it difficult. But does it mean that just because times are changing, we should discard these traditions entirely. I have seen it happen with families where feuds get in the way of the strong ties that were there in the days when everyone stayed over and shared mattresses on the lounge floor. You know, we lived in two bedrooms, in two rooms mm -hmm. in my children. Kitchen, kitchen becomes bedroom at night. Yes. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. yes. We, we, we come from that era. Yes. Kitchen becomes bedroom. Pride and disinterest replaces closeness of the time we climbed the power tree and stayed up until 4 o'clock talking about anything. Today you can't even stand your driveway. Let alone power tree. Right? And yet, we are so surprised when the only time we see them is at, see our family at? Not only funerals. Yeah. 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 You see them at yeah. Just in time for the grandparent who you haven't seen for 10 years. Grandfather, uncle, auntie, very sick. How? Oh. oh. See the mother of How is auntie? Nothing, nothing happened to her. Eh? <laughs> oh, she gets better. Ma, I'm talking about experience. Mm. I come from a family too. I'm not a city. Yes. I went through. Right? Mm -hmm. We all went through. Mm -hmm. So what I'm merely telling, let's forget. Try to bring back. Yeah. I mean, bring back. Yeah. We have cell phones, Skype, Facebook, yet that close cousin with whom you used to steal chomp from the bread bread is so far away, you forgot your birthday and don't see her son until he is a year old. And then wonder why the kid recoils when you try to greet him with a big hug. Say, hi, I am your aunt. Why is she? He pulls back. <laughs> that child doesn't know you. He doesn't. We are losing that sense of community that once made us strong. We are slowly losing touch with the support system we had so that life would be that much easier. We are squandering that great supply of love and care that lay in the unity of our kids. What for? For the BMW in the garage and the ability to say, I send my son to proper college. Right. He will. He will. Sure. Sure. Yes, the fees cost more than your house. Mm -hmm. I'm sending the prophet calling the fees cost so much more than your house. <laughs> yes. What are they achieving by doing that? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. It's losing gain for everyone. We need our family, especially in times of grief. In order to have that, we need to have them around anytime. Be it meeting for coffee during a lunch break, a short phone call to say, Hi, dinner at each other's houses every now and then. We can do that. Mm -hmm. Meet somebody, your family, sister, auntie, uncle. Ma, when you're coming home, come for a cup of tea. Come and visit us. Receive them with open hands. Mm -hmm. Don't give them cold treatment. That is how you make that kind of mm -hmm. love. It's pretty that it takes a funeral to unite family. Mm -hmm. What's yours? You haven't visited that person that was sick for 10 years. Now you're going to bury it. What kind of conscience we have as women? When we should be taking every opportunity to get together and keep the bonds close. 
even if you don't really like Raji Kamala, who leaves a bright pink lipstick mark on your cheek after greeting you. <laughs> family is family for a reason, Ma. We should not waste that. When we lose it, we will never get it back. And the next funeral may just be spent with nobody, but with who? Say somebody, you haven't visited, I could be undone, my son is going to profit all it is done. And you die. In the world, you'll be left alone. And the only people that will be there at the funeral is a priest and undertaker. So, take my advice. This is important. If you have any grievances, any revenge, something like that against them, forget it. Forget it. Give them a surprise. Give them a hug. Make that person good as you. If you are a good person, try to make that person good as you. What did I say? Oh, yes. 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 We'll meet again next time. Sweet Tamil language and simple. Practice it. Take it long.
प्रियम